Welcome to church, everybody. Hey, we're so thrilled, so thrilled you're here today in Yorktown and in Newport News. Of course, joining us online and a big shout out to the men at Indian Creek. And um, I'm so honored, so honored that you have prioritized this hour in your week. And I just want to make sure, I want to make sure you know next week, next week is a special Sunday. You don't want to miss it. Of course, it's Mother's Day. All right, it's Mother's Day. This is your this is your fair warning, fellas. If you haven't gotten prepared yet, it's Mother's Day. Get ready for that. But it's a great Sunday to um, be back in church. It's a great Sunday to bring friends and family, bring mama to church, all right, next Sunday. And I'll give you a little sneak peek. The one and only Tabitha Hodges is preaching next Sunday, y'all. Let's go. So you don't want to miss that. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be incredible. Today, though, we are uh, wrapping up our series that we've been calling In the Zone, and um, I hope this has been an inspiring, uh, helpful, challenging, eye-opening series in so many different ways. We've really built the whole collection of messages off of one verse from the Bible that were Jesus' own words. Jesus himself um, gave us this, this, this theme verse that I, I think really does frame so much of our understanding about how to live life the way God wants us to live it and really the way we want to live it as well. Jesus said this, he said, uh, the thief comes only to still kill and destroy. That's the enemy's ploy. That's that's his plot line. That's his that's his strategy. That's his goal to steal, kill and destroy. And can I just say to you that I, th- those words sound very um I don't know, very very aggressive. I I, I think uh stealing, killing and destroying seem, seems 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 pretty aggressive, and sometimes the enemy's attack on us is aggressive. But I want to warn you that sometimes the enemy is is quite subtle, and and that his means by which to steal from you, kill you, and and destroy you uh, may actually may actually be understated. In fact, I think one of the greatest uh, strategies of the enemy in our life is to get us to settle for less than God's best. Just, just mediocrity is an incredible strategy that the enemy uses against us. And it's how he steals from us, kills us, and destroys us. Jesus said, though, hey, I, I came for a different reason. If that's why the thief comes, if that's why the enemy comes, Jesus said, I came that they may have life and they may have it abundantly. Jesus' plan for your life and for mine is that we would experience an abundant life. Jesus came to, to, to give you life in the zone, to give you set apart, blessed, um, be, better than you could imagine kind of living, and, and it's in the zone living. And in this final in the zone message today, I want to help those of you who feel like you're stuck outside the zone and you really want to get in the zone, but you're not exactly sure you can make it there alone. I, I, want to, I want to help those of you who feel like you need a hand getting into the zone that Jesus wants you to live your life in. In, in, in fact, um, if you came here today needing help, you came to the right service, all right? I, I'm just telling you, I, I think it's going to be an incredibly helpful, helpful message for you today. I... Um, I told the uh, men yesterday at our men's event, which was awesome, by the way. Uh, I, t- I told the men um, at men's event yesterday that I recently had lost a, a, a bet uh, to our campus pastors, and um, and uh, it, it involved some punishment. When you lose a bet, it should involve some punishment, right? And so um, my, my bet invo- involved some <laughs> some punishment, something I'd never done before, by the way, something I plan to never do again, all right, just so you all understand, the punishment was, uh, was, was not enjoyable at all, and, um, and we actually captured it on, on video, and to set up today's big idea, I, th- I thought I would um, share it with you, why don't you, uh, why don't you check this out? 38 degrees, is that what she said? Three, two, yeah. Yeah, 
is in the zone. You got to get in the zone. There's no room in the zone. Here Lord Jesus, may we never forget. I don't, I'm not going to do that again. Uh, some people do it all the time. I know some people do it all the time. And I'm, I'm just going to, how many of you have cold plunged before? How many of you have done a, a cold plunge before? Okay, okay, let me ask it a different way. Because I, I got a buddy who cold plunges at 55 degrees. Okay, so that doesn't count. That's 38 degrees. How many of you have cold plunged at 38 or lower? Let's just call it like it is. Perfect. Six of us are in the club. That's amazing. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my experience, and uh, this this may not be everybody's experience. It was it was just it was just my experience because I fully anticipated that as Pastor Ben counted me down to the three minute mark, three minutes of pure torture for losing this bet. By the way, you people caused me to lose the bet. I'm just going to say it that way. I ain't going to tell you what it was about. I'm just telling you, you caused me to lose the bet because you didn't invite enough people on Easter. That's another sermon for another day. All right. So, nonetheless. <laughs> Nonetheless, um, why do you look like you enjoy that fact? You're like, uh, so this was my experience. I fully thought at the end of three minutes when, when Pastor Ben counted me down to zero, I really thought I would just pop right up out of that ice bath like I popped into it. Like I, I, re I really just thought, man, I'm just going to jump right up. But when he counted me down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, zero at zero I couldn't move. Y'all, I'm just being honest with you. I don't know if my joints were frozen. I'm not sure what happened. I literally could not move. And I'm convinced to this day that if Pastor Ben had not reached his hand down into that cold tub and pulled me out, I'd have sat there and froze to death. I'm convinced of it. Because I don't think I could have gotten out. I don't think I, don't think I could have gotten out on my own. I needed a hand. I, I needed a hand. I needed some help. Give, give me the God cam. This is, um, this is God's perspective, all right? This is the last, the last week of the God cam. This is God's point of view, how he sees us, and, and he has a place for us, a, a place that, that is the sweet spot, the blessed place, the place that he wants us to live life, the abundant life that Jesus promised is found in the zone. And yet most of us, most of us find ourselves living somewhere outside the zone of God's best for our lives. Most of us find ourselves wandering around the edge and the ledge of the zone. And, and, and if, if that's you today and you're like, man, I'm out here, but I want to be in there. I'm, I'm somewhere out here in my life, but I really want to be in here where Jesus wants me to be. If you find yourself outside the zone wanting to be in the zone, today I want to tell you that just like Pastor Ben reached that hand down, pulled me up out of that cold plunge, there is a hand from heaven reaching out to pull you right where you need to be into the zone. It's possible. It's possible for you to live the life Jesus offers. It's possible. In fact, the, the Bible says this. The Bible says, for I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. There's, there's a hand from heaven reaching down today saying, I want to help you. I want to help you move from where you are to where I want you to be. I, I, I want to help you move from outside the zone to in the zone. And if you're not there today and you want to be, and you want to be, I realize I might be preaching to some people today who don't really want to be. You're, you're okay with life like everybody else lives. You're, 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 you're fine living ordinary, average, mediocre life. That, that's, if, if that's you, this sermon isn't for you. But if you, are, if, if you are mysteriously drawn by the Spirit of God to a life that's more abundant, more full, more fulfilling, more satisfying, more gratifying, if, if, there's, a, if there's something on the inside of you saying, man, I don't want to settle for the life I've been living. I want to experience the abundant life Jesus promises that I'm teaching you today. All you got to do, all you've got to do is hold your hand out. And let God's hand help you in the zone because you don't have to spend another day, not another day, missing out on God's best for your life. You don't have to fall for the trick of the enemy 
that says mediocre living is designed for you. Not at all. God made you for more. He made you to experience life in the zone. And all you got to do is reach your hand out, and he'll help you get there today. I want to show you this from one of my favorite in the zone stories, okay? We've gone through a whole bunch of them in this series of messages. I want to take you to one more. It's from the book of Acts in the Bible, and, um, and it's, a, it's an in the zone classic, all right? I think, it is, I think it's such a beautiful picture of what Jesus wants to do in your life and mine. This is how the story begins. The Bible says that one day, one day, Peter and John, two of Jesus' followers, you've probably heard of these guys before, Peter and John, they were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. And now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple court. So every day, every day there was prayer in the temple at three o'clock and every day Two followers of Jesus, Peter and John, and a whole bunch of other people, a whole bunch of others would go and pray at 3 o'clock. And every day, every day, this same man who had been lame for his whole life, he, he, he never walked before. This, this same man, his friends would carry him and set him just outside the temple gate so that he could beg for something from those who were going inside the temple gate to pray. He, he knew these are really nice people. Like, these are really nice people to go to Water's Edge Church. And so, man, if I could just, like, get something from them. I know they'd give me something. And so he sat outside the temple gate watching others go into the temple gate. And I, and I, want, I, want, to, I, want, you, I want you to see this. Give, give me the God cam because I, I think it's pretty clear to visualize how this works within the zone. The lame man was out here watching people go in there. Like he spent his whole life. Imagine this now. Imagine this. He spent his whole life. On the edge and the ledge of the zone, outside of the zone, zoned out of God's best. He spent his whole life sitting out here while he watched everybody else around him take steps in here. He was so close to experiencing it, and yet he never got to experience it for himself. The Bible says that his friends sat him outside the gate, called Beautiful. That was the gate's name. Beautiful. Beautiful. This gate was said to be about 75 feet tall. It was made totally of bronze. It was, um, it was made with these ornate designs and elaborate scenes that were engraved directly into the thick metal. Uh, the, the gate was so heavy that it was said to need 20 strong men just to open or close the gate. One historian is quoted as saying, this gate's beauty was beyond gold or silver because of its dazzling, intricate splendor. The gate called beautiful. And every day, every day this man who couldn't walk, had never walked. Every, every day this man who had been lame from birth... Probably around 40 years old, most scholars believe, was sat by his friends at a beautiful gate where he was helpless. He, he, couldn't, he couldn't help himself, where he was hopeless because there was no indication that his circumstances would, would ever change. And it's been that way his whole life. He was so close to something beautiful, yet so far from ever entering it. And now you probably know why I think this is a classic in the zone story. It actually describes the way most of us live our lives. M m most of us live our lives like this. Go back to the God camp. Most of us find ourselves living outside the zone of God's best. And we're so close. We're so close to experiencing it. Yet we never actually do. And maybe it's mindset and maybe it's circumstances or maybe it's know-how or maybe maybe it's our own willingness maybe it's obedience I, I, I don't know maybe it's maybe it's 
Maybe it's tradition. Maybe it's something else. I'm not sure. But most of us, most of you today, find yourself living outside the zone. So close to the abundant, full, incredible life that Jesus promised. And yet, you're so far from actually experiencing it. I want you to um, write down this word today. And I just want to see what God might want to I want to say to you about it. Write, write down the word um, settled. The word settled. Is it possible today that you have settled for less than what God wants for you? Is it possible that the way you're living, the life you're living, the, the, the way you're pursuing Jesus, the way you're living your life for Jesus, is it possible today that you have settled for something short of God's best and now you're just calling it normal? Settled. Settled. I feel like we all do this with all sorts of things in our life. There's actually a lot more to most things in life than what we experience we normally don't experience the more because we settle for less. That's just true in so many different areas of our life. I'll give you one silly example just to help you start thinking about this uh, maybe in a different way. Just a, just a silly example from my life. Uh, do, do you know that for the first 40 years of my life, the first 40 years, y'all, of my life, I never paid to get a hair wash after a haircut for 40 years. Never. Never. Then one day I turned 40, and I thought to myself, I'm going for it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And so there's some men in here, and you only go to a barber shop, and you're like, they don't even offer that as an option there. Well, you're missing out, dude. You're missing out. Because when I turned 40, I looked at the lady cutting my hair, and I'm like, let's do the wash. Let's do the wash. If you've never had somebody wash your hair Oh, Jesus, it was awesome. <laughs> For 40 years, I did not know that the best part of a haircut was the hair wash. I had no idea. For 40 years, I had settled for something less. And now I'm 48. And for the last eight years, every time I get a haircut, I get a hair wash. Sometimes I get a haircut just to get a hair wash. <laughs> That's how awesome it is. And I didn't know. I didn't know for 40 years I called something normal and settled for it when actually I was missing out on something so much more. I'm just telling you, you can go your whole life, your whole life missing out on the more because you've settled for less. The lame man in the story, he had settled outside the gate called beautiful. And he called it normal. The gate's called beautiful, but not to him, because he never even walked through it. The gate was called normal to him. He was sitting outside the beautiful gate, but living a normal, less than beautiful life. And this is why I'm so passionate about this series of messages. Because there are a lot of you, a lot of you who've been sitting just outside the gate called beautiful. Living a less than beautiful life. You've settled. You've settled and started calling it normal. You've settled in a dead-end job. You, you've settled in, a, in an unfulfilling relationship. You, you've settled in, in, a, in an overwhelming financial situation. You've settled with those deadbeat friends. Or you've settled going nowhere spiritually. You've settled in your anxiety or in your bitterness or in your disappointment. You, you've, you've settled. And the gate is called beautiful, but you haven't gone through it yet. You've settled for something less than beautiful. And you call it normal. And I'm just trying to help you see in this series that God has more in store for you. You don't have to settle outside the zone. You don't have to settle where you are. You don't have to settle for less than God's best. God actually invites you in. Invites you into the gate called beautiful because he wants your life to be called beautiful. Not normal. Not normal. 
I, w- I wish I could help you do the hard work. I'm going to ask you to do it. I can't make you do it. I'm going to ask you to do it, though. The hard work of ask- answering this question, where am I settling? Where am I settling? That's, a, that's, not, an easy, that's not an easy question to, to answer. It takes being honest and introspective and and self-aware enough to recognize I, I, I'm just living this way because I saw my mama live this way. And, and, and I know it's not the best way. Or I'm just living this way because everybody else lives this way. Or I just pray this way because that's the way I've always prayed. Or I just worship this way because everybody else around me worships this way. And because everybody else around me worships this way. I just worship this way. And so I've settled there. It's hard to answer the question, where have I settled? Oh, I'm just do that at work because that's the way everybody else does at work. Or I just raise my kids like that because that's the way I was raised. Or that's the way the person on Instagram raises their kids. And so now that's how I raise my kids. But I'm just settling. It's difficult to admit where you have settled. And some of you have settled outside the beautiful gate. And I think it's time to recognize that there's a gate called beautiful that God wants you to walk through. He wants you to enter into it, not sit outside of it anymore. He, listen, everybody, he has a beautiful life for you. Don't settle for normal. This, this man did what he, what he did every day. He, uh, he sat outside the gate called Beautiful. And he would beg for money. That's what he did. He would beg for money. It, it says this. It says, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. That's what, that's what he would do every day. It's the same old thing. He would ask them for money. And Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Expecting to get something from them. He was expecting money. That's, that's, that's what he was searching for. Expecting money. Let me give you a second word to write down. If you wrote down the word settled, write down this word. Searching. Searching. The man settled. And now he's searching. Now let me explain what happens to you. Listen. Let me explain what happens to you when you settle for less than God's best in your life. When you settle for less than God's best, you start searching for a replacement of God's best, but you look for it in all the wrong places. So you start looking to the people in your life, or looking to the circumstances of your life, or looking to your job, or looking to your hobbies, or looking to your bank account, or looking to your kids, or looking to your spouse, or looking to your parents, or looking to your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You start looking to the wrong places with expectations that they're going to give you what you truly need in this life, that somehow, that somehow they're going to replace what you're missing because you've settled outside of God's best for your area of your life. That's what happened for this man. He had settled outside of God's best. And so he starts searching for something, thinking that it would replace God's best. He starts searching for money. Let, 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 me, let me take you back to the God camp, because some of you are like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really know if I, if I understand what you're saying. Okay, fine. Jesus said there is an abundant life. Jesus said there is a life that you can live to the full. Jesus said there is a sweet spot of success. There's an uh, there's a, there's a in-the-zone living. There, there's, there's a blessed place. There's a beautiful gate. Jesus said, I want you to live life in the zone. Live life to the full. And yet most of us settle outside the zone. Most of us settle outside the gate called beautiful. Most of us settle for average, normal, mediocre. Most of us look at the life Jesus said you can live to the full. And here's what we do. Because we aren't living life to the full, we fill up our lives. Let me say it again. Let me say it again so you get it. Because we aren't living life to the full, 
we fill up our lives. Because what we're really trying to do is find a replacement for the best life that Jesus offers to us. And this explains why you drink too much. <laughs> it just got real. I know. I know. I know. How quickly it turns. <laughs> this explains your addiction. And this explains why you sleep around. And this explains why you're a workaholic. And this explains why you why you're never satisfied with your relationships. And this explains why you've been to four different churches in the last four years. And after today, you're thinking about leaving this one too. <laughs> it explains why you have to wear the latest trends. Drive the nicest car. Have the newest technology. It explains why, it explains why you can't post a picture on Instagram without using a filter. It explains why you've signed your kids up for every activity under the sun to the point that it has ruined your relationship with them. It has ruined your schedule. You can't stand the weekend because you don't ever get to catch your breath and yet you can't say no. It's because you're expecting the wrong things from the wrong places and you're searching for a replacement to the one true life, the abundant life that Jesus offers to you. Exactly. <laughs> right on cue. That was somebody pouring out their beer in the back row, y'all. That's what happened. <laughs> Gave it up. Holy Ghost got a hold of them. Amazing. It's incredible. <laughs> when you're in the zone, when you're in the zone, look at, look at this. When you're in the zone, there's such purpose, and there's such peace, and there's such joy, and there's such confidence, and there's such identity, and there's such security. When you're living the life God has called you to live, God has affirmed in you. You don't have to try to be something to somebody else. You don't have to try to find yourself. You don't have to try to discover who I am in this life. You don't have to try to look outside of your relationship with Jesus to fill you up. No, no, no. When you live life in the zone, in the best place, the God place, you have everything you need. So you don't have to start searching everywhere else for everything else, looking in all the wrong places, only to still be empty. The man expected money from Peter and John because he was searching. And I love you enough to tell you today, you're searching for something too. You are. And too many of us or looking in all the wrong places. Maybe this is a question you should wrestle with this week. What am I searching for? What am I searching for? Because behind every decision you make, behind all those social media posts that you put out there, behind all of your reactions and responses, behind your attitude, there's a motivation. And it's probably you searching for something. Search, searching for validation, searching for meaning, searching for acceptance, searching for love, searching for purpose, searching for success. You're searching too. The man was searching but look at the story. Look at the story. It says this. It says, then Peter said, then Peter said, silver or gold. Remember, he asked for money. Silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Peter says, walk. 
I love this next part. Taking him by the right hand. Don't miss that. Taking him by the right hand. He helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And when all the people who saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man. Hey, that's the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. I remember him. He's been sitting out there for years. He's been sitting outside the beautiful place. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. At what had happened to him. That's an awesome story. That's an incredible in the zone story, by the way. I love it. I love it. He's walking. He's jumping. He's praising God, a man who's never walked before. Don't miss this, though. He was searching for money. And God wanted to give him a miracle. Think about that. He's sitting outside the gate called Beautiful. He wasn't asking for a miracle. He's asking for money. And God wanted to do so much more because God always has more in store. God always has more in store for you. I'm just trying to, I'm just, I'm trying to help you see that God has more for your marriage. Well, I just, I just, I just want us to be happy. I just want us to be happy. Really? Why settle for happiness? Why is that all you've settled for? God wants your marriage to be satisfying, fulfilling, on purpose, on mission, as an example of others. God wants your marriage to be so amazing that the younger couples in our church line up to talk to you after service to say, what's the secret to your marriage? God has more in store. This guy, he just wanted a few coins to go buy a cup of coffee. And God wanted to give him new legs to walk around the block. Well, I just, I just, I just want to try to get my family to, to church a couple times a month. That'd be awesome. Just to get them to, why would you settle for that? Like, that's the goal. Why would you not want your family to be leading the church? Why would you not want your kids to have such a passion for the house of God that they can't stop talking about it throughout the week? Why would you not want your family to be so on mission that you change an entire city? Why do you settle for mediocre? A couple times at church, you know, that'd be great. That's that's so average. That's so normal. That's so mundane. God has more in store. When you settle in the wrong place, you search for the wrong things, and you find yourself asking God for way too little. Dreaming way too small. Well, I just, I just want a man who, you know, who go to church with me. If I can just find a man like that, just a man who go to church with me. Really? Why don't you find you a man who loves Jesus, who reads the word, who prioritizes the things of God, who has a 401k on top of it? (laughs) Come on. If (laughs) If you're struggling answering the question, where am I settling? A good place to start answering that question is just look at the last prayer you prayed and see how small it was. If God answered the last prayer you prayed, would anybody think it's a miracle? Who do you think I prayed this morning? Lord, Lord, please let somebody show up at church. Just anybody. Just let just somebody. Just anybody. I'll take anybody today, Lord. You think that was what I prayed this morning when I woke up at 5 a.m.? I pray, Lord, fill your house with hungry hearts today. Lord, bring so many people to church that traffic backs up on Route 17. Lord, fill every single feed on Facebook and channel on YouTube with this message of the gospel. And when I say, if anybody wants to say yes to Jesus, may hundreds respond to the gospel. That was my prayer today. 
not settling for, oh, just bring somebody, you know, if maybe somebody. Looks like Yorktown's kind of full today. We'll get more chairs next week, don't worry. <laughs> if you haven't gotten anything out of this series yet, this is week five. I know it takes some of you a long time. I understand, I understand. So just get this, okay? I'm just going to put it on the bottom shelf for everybody. I want everybody, I want everybody to get the theme of the series. The theme of the series is God is a God of abundance. And if you aren't experiencing abundance, you aren't experiencing all that God has for you. If your marriage is limping along, God has more. If your kids are struggling, God has more. If your finances are overwhelming, God has more. If your mental health is full of dark thoughts and depression, God has more. God has more. You, you can live life in the zone. Jesus promised it. The, the, lame man, the lame man had never walked. He settled. He searched. And then don't, 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 don't miss what happened. I wanted to show it to you again. So, so, so he, he, he asked for money. Remember, Peter looks down. This is what the Bible says. T taking him by the hand, Peter helps him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles become strong. He jumps to his feet and begins to walk. This, this is awesome. I just want to make sure you, I just want to make sure you see it. So let me, let me take you back. Um, look, give me a volunteer. Jack, will you come help me, Jack? So we're going to go to the God cam, Jack. And this is what's going to happen. You're going to be Peter in the zone. All right? You're going to be Peter in the zone. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the lame man sat outside the zone. All right. So you're 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 in the zone. I'm outside the zone. And we're on the God cam. Yes, we are. Okay, great. So this this is this is how this is how the scene played out from God. This is God's perspective. We're just showing you God's perspective. Okay, so the man sitting outside the zone says, Peter, can I have some money? Peter says, we didn't rehearse this, y'all. We didn't rehearse this, Lord. Uh, Peter says, No, there's no money. And and, and instead, Peter offers the man his hand. Peter offers the man his hand, and when the man takes Peter's hand, Peter gets up, and look what happens. He joins him in the zone. Why? Because there was a hand offered to the man, and I think it's fascinating that the man was asking for a hand out, and God sent a hand up. And I want to tell you, that God can do the exact same thing in your life. Because this man went from settling to searching. Here's our third word. To being strengthened. He was strengthened. He was strengthened. His ankles became strong. Why? Why? Because Peter's hand helped him up. And that's life in the zone. And I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm saying because this, this, this brother went from out of the zone to into the zone just like that. But it doesn't mean he didn't still have some problems. It doesn't mean he wasn't still broke as a joke. It doesn't mean he didn't need to learn some new skills. He probably had to go get a job, learn some trades. He probably had to figure some things out in life. Didn't mean that life was going to go perfect. Just meant that now, now for the first time in 40 years, now he understood the more that Jesus promised. And now, he actually had the strength to stand in the zone. And that's what God wants to do in your life, too. In the zone, living isn't about perfection. And it isn't about easy. It's about the strength to stand. It's about strengthening you for the next battle. It's about strengthening you for the mission. It's about strengthening you in your marriage. It's about strengthening you to be the dad God called you to be. It's about strengthening you to make a difference. Life in the zone isn't a life without problems. Life in the zone is a life with the strength from the power of God to face the problems you have and overcome them. 
So let God strengthen you. Some of you last week, you took the recurring gift challenge or you took the 90-day tithing challenge. And when you did, you took a step into the zone. And that didn't mean that your financial problems went away overnight. It just meant this. That you reached your hand up to the one who could give you strength to overcome those financial problems. Four weeks ago, a whole bunch of you got baptized and you took a step into the zone of obedience. Following Jesus in the waters of baptism. It didn't mean that when you came up out of the waters of baptism that all your problems and all your stress and all your temptations just, just, just suddenly dripped away from your life. Like, like the water dripping away from your forehead. No, 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 no. You went home with all that same stuff. But you went home with your hand lifted high. Reaching out to the one who could give you strength to overcome all those problems in your life. That's in the zone living. The man was strengthened because he was in the zone. And I wanted, I wanted to show you one last thing in the story. One last thing. Because the story ends a few verses later, and this is what it says. It says, uh, while the man held on to Peter and John, while the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the palace called Solomon's Colonnade. He held on to Peter and John. He held on to Peter and John. Now remember, he's been healed. He's been healed. The Bible said that his legs and his ankles were strengthened. He's in the zone. He's been healed. I wonder why he held on to Peter and John. He's been healed. He's strengthened. Why did he hold on? Some might say he held on because he was unsure. And I appreciate that. I actually understand that. When you've lived a certain way for a real long time, it takes you a little while to acclimate to a new way of life. That's true for a lot of you today. You've lived a certain way so long in your life. It's hard for you to acclimate to this new life Jesus has called you into. I get that. But I actually, I actually, think, I actually think there's a different reason why he held on to Peter and John. I think there's a, a different reason. So let me walk you through the sequence of events one more time. Okay, just one more time. So for, for 40 years, go back to the zone. For 40 years, he's lived outside the zone. He's settled. He's searching. He reaches his hand out. Peter, Peter, Peter helps him into the zone. He's strengthened. He does a, a, little, a, little, a, a, little, a little leaping for joy. He's, he's dancing. He's celebrating. He's raising the roof. He's jujuing on the beat. I don't know what he's doing, but he's fired up because he's now living life in the zone, strengthened. But the Bible says he's still holding on. Why is he still holding on? I think he kept holding on because he knew where his help came from. That's what I want to end the series with today. Look at me, church. I need you to understand this. You don't have to settle for life outside the zone. God has more in store for you. And if you hold your hand out, he'll help you. He'll strengthen you in the zone. If you're weak, he's strong. If you're weary, he's rest. If you're poor, he's rich. If you're lonely, he's a friend. If you're sick, he's healing. If you're addicted, he's freedom. If you're sad, he's joy. If you're struggling, he's contentment. If you're anxious, he's peace. If you're in need, he's everything you need. You don't have to settle outside the zone. He has more. You just reach out your hand. And he'll help you. And when you get to the zone, listen to me. When you get to the zone, do not think it was by your power, your might, or your strength. When you get to the zone, realize it is by his power and his strength. And when you get there, do what the man in the story did. Keep holding on. Keep holding on. And I'll promise you this. He'll keep holding on to you. The psalmist said it like this. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. 
the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. That's life in the zone. And if you're searching for a handout today, hold out your hand and get a hand up. And hold on because the life Jesus promises us, it's available to you. Bow your heads, close your eyes, open your hearts. If you're searching or settling and you need to be strengthened, open your hand toward heaven and you will find the mighty hand of a heavenly father reaching out. Thank you, Jesus, that I don't have to settle in the zone, outside the zone, outside the the beautiful gate anymore. I can enter in. Speak to us today where we've settled for less and filled up our life searching for the wrong things in the wrong places. Speak to your children. We'll listen. and We'll reach our hand out to be strengthened by you today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Today somebody needs to reach out your hand for salvation. You've never said yes to Jesus and this is your moment. Say, Jesus, I want to know you. I want my sin forgiven by you. I want to be made right with God in heaven through you and live my life for you. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. It's changed us today. May we step into the life you've always called us to live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.